Hey Basa, today I'm here to review the Medela Freestyle Flux for you guys. It's been over a month since I did my unboxing and I've been using it, so it's time to do a review for you guys. If you are new to my channel or my videos, I will be going over different review points that I have, touching on a few extras, giving you a glimpse at the pump itself, and also at the very end, sharing my experience, obviously. If you guys are curious about what comes with this pump, I will talk about it briefly, but I did a whole unboxing, so I will link that in case you wanna see literally every little single thing and that it comes with. But for today, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into this review. The only thing that I want you to keep in mind is that this Freestyle Flex is a brand new pump. So with certain aspects of my review points, we're gonna have to be a little bit forgiving because it just came out and with time, things can change. But I will kind of address those as I go over them. So the very first one is price. Now, the retail price of this pump is around $380. But places like Bye Bye Baby and a couple other websites have it on there for $325. And at Bye Bye Baby, I used one of their normal 20% off coupons they send out all the time, and I got the pump for $260. So just a little tidbit, if you're going to buy it from anywhere, I would suggest at least getting a 20% off coupon, if not better on it. And like I said, I ordered mine from Bye Bye Baby. Now I know the older version of the Medela Freestyle was covered under certain insurances. It wasn't common or really normal to see it covered by your insurance, but I do know that some people did have that as an option. I'm not sure if they plan to use this new Freestyle Flex to phase out the older version or not. It's so brand new, that's kind of hard to tell. So we might eventually with time see this as an option covered by certain insurances, but I wouldn't hold your breath. I don't think it's going to be available anytime soon. Again, I have no way of knowing that 100% sure, but I think it's just one of those things that will be gradually rolled out right now. It seems to be more of just a retail option. Next up is function and ease of use. This pump has minimal buttons to it, so it's actually fairly easy to learn because there's not a whole lot of options because it is pretty straightforward. The next review point is recommendations and reviews. The lowest I could find was on Amazon and it had four stars, but on places like Bye Bye Baby and Target and Aeroflow, I believe, they all had close to five star ratings and that was with hundreds of reviews on them too it wasn't just like a couple or a handful either so number four is portability and power options obviously this is a rechargeable pump so for that reason you can charge it up and you can move it all around your house you don't have to be hooked up to any wires that being said you can use it while it is charging although the user manual said that if you don't have to, don't do that. And that kind of goes with any rechargeable battery. If you don't have to use it while it's charging, try not to do that. But this is how big the pump is. It really is basically the size of my hand. It weighs less than a pound. It's also on this cord that is pretty durable and you can also make it smaller or adjust it however you might want. And for that reason, I feel like it could come in handy in a lot of different ways. And with it being so small and compact, I feel like obviously this is a very portable pump. Next up is accessibility to replace our spare parts. And this is one of the reasons I put that little reminder at the beginning of the video about it being a brand new pump. Right now, the only place I have found replacement or spare parts for this pump is on Medela's website. So if you need them right now, that's where you would go. But I think in the future, it will be a little bit more expanded. I've seen their replacement parts for other pumps on Amazon and just other places. So I think with time, they'll become more readily available. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then the next one is customer service. I've never had a problem with Medela's customer service. They've always been just fine to work with. Number seven is durability. Now this is gonna be one of the biggest things I talk about during this review. Per the owner's manual, it has a lifespan of 250 hours. If you break that down per day, that gives you about 40 minutes. That's not a lot of time for some people. If you're an occasional pumper, that's probably gonna be suffice, but someone who's an exclusive pumper, 40 minutes a day is just not even close, really. That's more in line with maybe a pump session, pump session and a half for some people. So try to keep that in mind, but I have been using this multiple times a day for the past month, and so far I have not had any issues with it. Another thing to keep in mind is that just because a pump does mention a lifespan does not mean it automatically stops at that point. There are people who can attest to that that have used pumps that mention lifespans for years and years and never had an issue with them at all. 
but I do feel like it's worth mentioning for a nearly $300 plus depending where you buy it from kind of pump so I just want that to have been said I'll get more into depth about this in my experience and how I feel about the pump in just a little bit but I did want to touch on this at least a little bit obviously with it being a review point point. and the very last review point is noise level this pump is quiet and it can be very very quiet but when you do unattach your flange from your breast it is kind of loud. I will kind of play a clip for you guys so you can see exactly what I'm talking about here because it's not something that I've experienced with a lot of other pumps. but I just wanted that to be known in case you are worried about noise level if you're at work or if you're going to use this at certain points and stuff and you're really concerned about this. I just wanted you guys to know exactly what I'm talking about and also with it being quiet it still does shake a good bit so it can wobble. I would recommend you putting it on a stable surface. You know, a lot of times I keep my pumps right on the arm of my couch just because it's convenient. This is where I pump. But with this, I have to keep it in my lap or I put it over on the other couch cushion because sitting up on the arm of my chair, it eventually will just rock off. So something to keep in mind again. And there are a few extra things that I wanted to talk about before I get into my thoughts and opinions about it. Now, generally there are two different modes to a breast pump. There is a stimulation mode, which will go really, really fast. And then there's an expression mode, which will draw out milk. The Medela Freestyle Flex does offer that. Also, it is a closed system pump. It's only intended for one user. It also has, like I said, this cord. The screen on the front is a touch screen. So everything that you hit will be, as you can see, I'm just messing around to show you guys, but it's all touch screen. It's a light up so you can see it in the dark, you can see it during the day. The screen on it is very nice. It's not hard to read. It also does have an online PDF owner's manual. I will link that in case you need it. And lastly, this is a smart pump. It can sync to the My Medela app that I have downloaded before. I've used this app before with their Sonata pump. And from what I can remember, it hasn't changed a whole lot. It still has the same basic function and features that it did back when I used it quite a few years ago now. You're able to track stuff about your baby like sleep, diaper changes, feedings, and with yourself you can track breastfeeding sessions. There's also the ability to track their growth, whether it's height, weight, whatever, and it's kind of an all-inclusive app. And if I remember correctly, my only concerns about the app were the fact that they use the terminology of breastfeeding and pumping instead of nursing and pumping, and that still is the case on there. And also, they still don't have a remind notification setting. So I would really like to see for this app because I do feel like it's pretty inclusive. It, it's a great app if you ask me. The only thing that's missing is that it doesn't have some kind of reminder that says, you haven't nursed, you haven't pumped in this many hours, here's a reminder. And you're able to set that when you're logging your current one. That way you're able to remind yourself. I just feel like that's a pretty basic feature with most logging apps, whether it is for baby or parents. So I would really like to see it. They do have a little notification sometimes in your feed. If I don't log something, it'll say, you only logged so many pump sessions today are you sure you're not forgetting any? Which is great, and it's a step above, I think, what they used to do because I don't remember that from the first time, but it's still only when you open the app, and I'm not opening the app unless I'm using the pump. So other than that, I do still like the app. It works pretty much the same way. Okay, so now into my experience and my thoughts around this pump. So I think first things first, I was really excited about this pump. However, I wanted to keep my expectations low. I have played this game before with Medela and I was kind of let down. So that's the reason why I went into this kind of not expecting a whole lot. And I will say in general, I was very surprised. So first things first, I did get a little concerned seeing 
how little buttons this thing had. I realized quickly it didn't have a ton of customization. There is the button to switch between the modes of stimulation and expression, and you can adjust the vacuum level in each of those, but there's no cycle customization. So you're just getting whatever cycle rate they've already programmed in the pump for you. I was worried that I was not going to be able to get my high frequency settings that help me empty faster and more efficiently and it just my body responds well to. However, I like how this pump feels. I feel like it does a really good job for me. The more I used it, the more I enjoyed it and I felt like the settings that they have do work for me. Now, I feel like it's not going to appeal to a wide range of people just because the customization isn't there. They're going to hit less of a base that it's going to agree with than if they had put some kind of customization in, but it is also easier to use. It's a little give and take basically, but all around for myself, it worked pretty well. However, even though I was loving the pump, I was starting to really dislike the accessories with it. The connector has a slit in the back of it, and when I would lean to the side even a little bit, I'm not talking about excessively. I wasn't trying to lay down. I wasn't even, you know, dramatically laying on my side. I'm talking about literally just leaning like this. I found that milk would leak out the side. The other day, I had to reach down and I had to grab something that I had dropped off the floor and I was not completely horizontal. I was literally just bending a little bit forward like this and milk came out of that slit from bending forward. That got really annoying really fast. So basically I have to make sure I'm sitting upright and I'm not tilted any kind of way and that way I'm able to make sure that nothing is leaking. Other concern and my other gripe about the connector is that it comes down on the bottle and it hides about one to two ounces worth of space in the bottle, which doesn't seem like a lot, but if you're someone who can fill up their little five ounce bottles, you know that you need to be able to keep an eye on it for when you need to switch out your bottle or to empty whatever. However, it's covering up a good amount of space and if I get distracted or whatever, I might forget that I need to be paying attention to that. That's normal. We're moms. We have other stuff going on. There have been times where I've kept pumping and I've gone over the bottle's limit, but with how the connector is made, it's storing milk inside the connector. So when I go to unscrew it, not only have I overflowed the bottle, there's about an ounce inside the connector that will get everywhere. I have done that at least three or four times. Should I be putting on a bigger bottle and should I be making sure that that doesn't happen? Absolutely. Am I also human and I get distracted by my kids and other things that I have to do? Absolutely. I get that they're trying to do this sleek modern design and I'm not going to say that it doesn't look good because it does. I think they're taking a little away from function just to appeal to how it looks. I was really hoping that the accessories would be the same as the Sonata and they would slowly just be transitioning to those kind of connectors and tubing and everything else, but it's not. It's a different setup than even the Sonata and I'm not here to compare pumps, but I just really wish that they would be consistent with their parts because I feel like it'd be a lot easier to convince moms to stay in the Medela family to be able to buy more than one pump. I mean, who wants to have a couple different pumps and have different parts for each one? That just isn't very user-friendly and I wish that they would just kind of be consistent. It'd be easier on moms. I will say that the parts are very easy to clean. They come apart really nicely. Everything is wide and open in there. So that is a plus side. I will also say that I tried to use a Dr. Brown's bottle, which is a standard bottle just like a Medela one. However, it was leaking. I don't know if other standard bottles will work, but I found the only ones that don't leak when trying to use it with this connector and the setup and everything with this pump is the Medela bottles. So just keep that in mind. If you want to try a different brand of bottle, go for it, but just keep an eye on it and be aware so you're not losing your milk. The only time I had an issue with this pump was when I tried to use it for my first pump of the day in the morning. I go about a seven hour stretch at night without pumping because I am seven months postpartum. I don't do middle of the night pumps anymore. And 
it was giving me less milk in a longer amount of time. So I did have to switch back to my usual pump and finish that way because it just was not doing it for me. I think I needed a little bit higher frequency than what it could give me in the morning. I think I just needed that extra stimulation. I'm not really sure. I haven't ever had that happen to me before, but I just know for my first morning pumps, I can't use this. However, any other time of the day, it had no problem emptying me and it does a great job. It feels good. It empties me well, but first pump of the day, I've got to use something else. So as far as the battery goes, it charges up pretty quickly. Basically, by the time you're done pumping and you're going to plug it in to charge up, I would say by the time you need to pump again, it's probably going to be charged. I've never timed it to be exact, but I know that anytime I plug it in to charge it, I'm always surprised that it's already at a full charge by the time I look at it again. And also with how long it lasts, it lasts me between three to four sessions. Obviously, my sessions can vary just as everyone else's does depending on what's going on, but generally I get about three to four sessions out of it, which is in line with their two hour battery life that they say. Okay, so let's talk about that operating life a little bit. I have gone over how to talk about this quite a bit and I don't really know the best way. So I'm just going to speak candidly with you guys and I'm just going to speak to you the way I would a girlfriend who asked me my opinion on it. So let's just do that. So with this pump, like I said, in the user manual, it says a 250 hour lifespan. That's roughly 40 minutes a day. And my problem with that is that after doing some research, it is in basically all of their pumps user manuals. Even for the pump and style advance that has a wall adapter and has to be plugged in to use. So it's not even a rechargeable battery situation as much as it just seems to be a general message across their pumps. The only one I didn't find it for was the Symphony. So for me, I don't know why that's in there. And I feel like if it's not the actual case and these pumps can last far longer than that, all you're doing is putting doubt in the consumer's mind. They're not gonna trust your product at a certain point. It doesn't instill confidence, basically. And for $380, I want some confidence, if you know what I'm saying. $300 is a lot of money. That's a washer. That's a refrigerator. Like, the fact that someone's willing to invest that heavily into your brand and into your product, I feel like they should have some reassurance. So I don't understand why that verbiage is in there. I don't think that your freestyle flex is gonna quit at 250 hours and absolutely not work for you after that point. I don't think those things, but I also can't ignore what they put on one of the very first pages of their pumps and not tell my friends about it. So I don't know. I'm kind of torn on this topic. I guess I don't know really what to say about it anymore given the fact that I've seen it be in other pumps that are not rechargeable. I thought it was the rechargeable feature. It obviously is not. So I don't really know what to tell you guys other than the fact that I like this pump. I think that it works generally well for me. I plan to keep using it as long as I like it and I don't find anything that I like better. But I do think that there are some details that you should be aware of. And if you're comfortable with that and you're well aware of it and you still want to decide on this pump, then I say go for it. I do say go for it on Bye Bye Baby and use a 20% off coupon and only pay $260 because $380 is absolutely ridiculous. But I do think it's a good pump. It has worked well for me. There have been a couple things that I've been a little annoyed with. But if we're getting down to what actually matters with a pump, which is does it work? Is it comfortable? Yes. So if you know the details that I wanted you guys to know with this review and you're still comfortable and you're still willing to look at this pump and possibly invest in it, I would recommend it just as long as you're aware of what you're getting into. But that is everything for my review of the Medela Freestyle Flex. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching.